Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. We can move to our next pick, which is our API class. Okay. So I would like to know from you, have you ever got chance to work on the APIs? Um, no. For extracting data, yes. Other than that, no. Extracting data means uh, importing so, or exporting our data? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so you might aware about the API names of the objects which you are exporting it. So what object actually you are ex extracting? May I know on the high level? So actually, it, there were some reports uh, okay. that, that we extracted from Salesforce, but it was not mm -hmm. a CPQ report. So Yeah, Salesforce. Yeah, I understand. That's altogether a different. That's not a part of a Salesforce. That's a that will come with all the uh, you know uh, services from Salesforce, mm -hmm. uh, service cloud, sales clouds, yes, marketing, each and every one. So that's also fine. Okay, so let's start with the API class. Uh, that's actually a very vast topic. We'll try to cover uh, you know the high level thing, how the API class looks like, uh, what we can do in the API class. So API is basically nothing it's a you know app uh, you might aware of that api full form is application programming interface okay so an application programming interface is a way for two or more you know programs to communicate with each other so it's a software interface i'll say with the uh, which basically offering our services to the other pieces of a software with the help of that we are actually connecting Okay, so till now in Salesforce, uh, like what we have learned, we have seen a concept of a twin fields as well. So twin fields is also nothing but the API, uh, you know, uh, the API class which we can use it. So let me share my screen uh, one second. Okay. So twin fields is also a part of a, you know, the API class, you can use it. So Salesforce CPQ can pass values of a custom fields from one object to the another object based on some certain criteria. So this feature is known as a twin fields in Salesforce CPQ. Okay. So we don't need any kind of a formula field, no need of workflow, no need of process builder. So till now we did this many times. If you remember, we create a one field, let's say one pick list field in code line object and same API name we put in the product line, product option object also. And the same API name we put in the pricing uh, that uh, price rules as well. And the same field we put in the product object also. So we are not creating every time that field. What we are doing just, we are, we created once, but we are taking the same API name and we just copy paste the same API name into the other other objects in which we want to perform some kind of a action. Okay, so that is nothing but the twin fields. So Salesforce CPQ automatically doing a mapping in the backend to, you know, to understand, okay, the API name is same. It means these are two fields are similar. We need to process the same data. We need to look up these and we need to process the same. So this is actually happening, happening with the help of our API only, application program interface. Okay. There is no science behind this. It just, uh, uh, let's take an example here. Uh, as in sales representative, you are selling an internet subscription okay, to your customer. Now a code line you have, internet subscription service, but you also want to capture the service address on the code line. So when you convert this particular code, it becomes a subscription and you want the service address also should copy to your subscription record. So typically you would use a formula field or the process builder or the workflow to update this. But with the help of a twin fields in Salesforce CPQ, there is no need of formula field, no process builder, no workflow. 
you can just create a same field with the same API name in the two different objects as the code line object, the product option object, and you can copy paste the same whatever that you are putting on code line that will get copied into the product option or that will get passed into the opportunity products. Wherever you want that same data, you will just need to uh, create a custom field and have exactly matching field with the API name and that will automatically pass the values. Okay, so there is no need of, you know, putting a, a manual things. If you remember, we did a configuration attributes, right? So in configuration attribute, we set up three values. We created a three new values. Uh, one is a data type, other is a token text, third is a carrier. So these three, we are storing a value. We, the, we are actually storing our values on these fields on our code line object as well, on our product option as well, on our product as well. And whenever my opportunity is closed one, we can store those data on the opportunity product as well. So to store the data on the opportunity as well, we just need to create the same fields with the same API name on the opportunity object, opportunity product object, the data will get stored on the opportunity product as well. Okay, so earlier we used to have a, we used to create a formula field or the workflow or the process builder to achieve this scenario. But now in Salesforce CPQ, it's not necessary to have this. Okay, it will automatically perform. There are some key, no, key points to note. Minimum access, the read access on the source field and edit access on the target field. Standard fields cannot be mapped. That is but obvious. Whatever you are getting from the Salesforce CPQ map package, you won't be able to map that. You need to create your own custom field and then only you will be able to map it. Twins fields are populated only upon a record creation. Okay. Now making a bundle a favorite, then adding that favorite to the code line editor will not capture our two in field values. This also you need to take care whenever you are you know, working on two in fields. So whenever uh, you are having a bundle as a favorite, then adding that favorite to the code line editor, it will not capture the data which you store in the two in fields. Now, most important things that two Twin fields only map between the specific objects. Those objects should be available in Salesforce or your custom objects can be like today we created a new custom object. If you remember lookup object, iPhone cellular services with data type, service type, with data type, text and type and uh, carrier type. So that's a custom object. There also we map the same field. We just created the same field with the same API name. So that is also the API name with the help of our API, we are actually mapping it, but we are mapping between the two specific objects. So always make sure twin fields can only map between the two specific objects, not two. It can be many specific objects, but it will be many specific objects. Now there are some, uh, you know, some things, uh, some points I mentioned here. Like say column one, uh, column one says contract, service contract, opportunity, product, product, product option, quote line. These are my objects. Column two will describe the purpose here. So till now you have seen you created a field on product and the quote line on the product option also you created on the quote line also you created. So it will get mapped accordingly. So con contract opportunities made from amending or renewing the contract service contract opportunities made from amending or renewing the service contracts opportunity product if you want something on the opportunity products the quote line salesforce cpq map from opportunity product to the quote line only for standalone products and only when opportunity product has been created before a sales representative creates an opportunity first as a primary code. So this is a pre-step unless and until your code is, uh, once your code is made as a primary code, that field will not get mapped. Okay. So make sure it should be set up at the initial phase of your project if you require something. And if you set up today, and uh, your quote is already being a primary quote yesterday, 
so that field is not going to map okay so that the first step maybe uh, you set up today and then from tomorrow whatever the code is going to prepare as a primary that is going to capture the twin field data but if the old code or the legacy codes will not have that data so this you need to inform your sales representative if you have any kind of a twin fields on the code line and the opportunity products now product and the code line you already seen whatever the values you are updating on the product the carrier one data type uh, talk and text or the hardware type like in the guided selling process we store so many values like what type of a hardware what type of a cpu which region you are selling so these are the values we are storing on the product right and the same values if you want to store in the code line you can create a same values on the code line as well then product option to code line if a product and the product option both have a same field as a related code line the code line field inherits the value of the product option field so this the few scenarios you have already did except this uh, service contract and the contract one all of you already did many times now okay. so the last one is code and order if you want to map in between the code and order that's also one of the object mapping is possible in salesforce cpd okay the last one configuration attributes to the code line this you already did you created lots of configuration attribute and the same field you created on the code line and from the product option to code line also you did the same so this already you have achieved okay now as i mentioned here when you open the configurator to reconfigure the bundle salesforce cpq sets the product option and configuration attribute values based on matching field values from their related code lines Okay. You already did a practical during the configuration attribute setup. I mentioned in the theoretical way as well. So the mapping will get automatically do. You should have a same fields available on the product option, port line object, and the configuration attributes. Now also there is some kind of a special fields. Sorry, there is some kind of a special fields available in Salesforce CPQ. so a uh, specific custom fields can be created in salesforce cpq to make use of our advanced features okay this is more of the you know talk about the development part of the you know the uh, core developer part and they have to uh, have the exact defined api name and the cpq will understand the process the appropriate action so suppose if you are using these fields which is mentioned in the column 1 field the second is the object and the location location of the objects third is the data type and the description about these fields are mentioned here so these basically you can use whenever you are you know uh, you want to have something related to let's say additional discount unit okay so this field you can use in the code line object which is a data type as pick list so the value entered for this pick list field will change the unit of an additional discount entered on the code line so by default recommended pick list values are set as a percentage currency unit and total if you want to you know have it some your custom data in that you can use that but you need to change it while using this particular field only additional discount field same goes with additional instructions additional apply additional discount last apply partner discount first approvals achieved channel discount of list contracted account id okay. these are nothing but the api name which you can use whenever you are use, you want to use any kind of a special special field in salesforce cpq now this will be bit complex to understand for now to you as you all new to the you know developer part and the configurator part but as soon as you will you know start a basics developer you will understand that when to use and how to use so i am telling you i'm trying to tell you as much as i can 
but you need to do a uh, lots of hands on to understand this okay yes so yeah let me reshare my one more uh, slide to show you something related to the price rule as well okay okay so uh, this is nothing but the price rule uh, advantages which uh, i actually didn't discuss with you because wherever you are using a you know price rules on the field on the object called code you need to use the api name spqq underscore underscore code underscore underscore r and then relationship if any if there is no relationship end with c okay this is in the pdf that you will upload right yeah yeah okay okay yeah the data whatever i am sharing right now i'll share all the data with you okay, okay. there is no hidden there yeah. it's still there okay okay the parent code line also will be the same the api name to use this is spqq underscore underscore required by underscore underscore relationship dot field name whatever it is same goes with product and with r relationship and then field so you can use these api name to refer across the different objects okay this is nothing but a lookup queries which you already seen it's just a process to set up a lookup queries now let's go back in the salesforce and see a few of the things related to the api class so how you can check a api class you need to go to the setup go to the here you will find a apex class okay you will find a apex class here in the quick and find okay the next thing you will find a apex job as well apex trigger as well apex text execution apex test history apex settings okay so these are nothing but a whatever the customization you are going to do will store it here so let's say you created a apex class we get to store here in the classes you create any kind of a triggers before insert after insert before update after update then it will get to store here with the different events in the apex text history basically you can see what are the text being executed if if you execute any of your text as you know in salesforce we should have a you know criteria to pass the class that's 85% it should pass then only you will be able to you know save the class otherwise it will get fail so if you executing some apex test you can search it from here you can search the history from apex text history now the jobs here is like if you have if you are running a jobs then you can check whether your job status is completed or it is is in queue or it is failed whatever the status of your current job which is running in the backend you can check it from here okay so apex job is nothing but to update if you did any kind of a changes in your system okay if you did any kind of a change related to the product there will be one kind of a job if you change something related to the pricing there is one kind of a job which needs to be run if you change something related to the code there is one kind of a job which you need to run classes there is one job triggers there is one job so everything which have a one kind of a job which needs to be run if you are doing any kind of a changes or if you have a synchronous or asynchronous job that will run always so that data will get a store in the apex job and with the status you will be able to figure it out the status of your current job okay now if you can see here that this status is completed for my apex class account products this is my one of the uh, you know uh, i'll say a uh, class which is going to have some kind of a coding for now i don't have it but yeah if you are having something related to the you know accounts products uh, object you have some kind of a coding then that class will going to define it here so let me see if i have something to show you so if you click on the apex classes all the classes which is available in your system it will get appear here you can see all are the managed one you can see the sign all are the managed package classes which is coming as a package 
So it's nothing, uh, you did it custom. So if you want to create your custom class, you can do that. You can see there's a button called new. You can create your new class. Put a class here that will require a coding. So you need to put a class here with the API name, which I told you, if you want to make changes in that particular API, yes, it's fine. And run all test or schedule a Apex class. So this is also testing to test whether your Apex class return, what, whatever you have written, it's uh, correct or not. So you can text it, uh, test it, or you can schedule the Apex as well when you want to, you know, schedule this particular Apex class to run. So if I show you something related to the, it will check. Okay, as of now, it's not available. There is no code written here. So it's fine. I will show you on Monday. But we can write a code from here. And similarly, you will have an Apex triggers as well. So Apex triggers is nothing if you want to execute a trigger on different, uh, you know, events. Like you can see, uh, before event is there, after event is there, before update is there, after update is there. So there are the number of events available for the, you know, uh, if you have a knowledge on developer. So there's a number of events in the triggers before update, after update, before delete, after delete, undeleted, or uh, before updated. So there's a number of events available. So according to the events, uh, you can write your trigger, whatever you want to make, make, make it, you know, working for your current API class. Okay. Any questions still here? No. Yeah. This is okay. Sorry, Hidesh, can you come again? I just lost you. Yeah, yeah. I just said no, no questions right now. Okay, okay no problem. I'll share the yeah. PDF. You can just go through it later in your free okay. time. Sure. And you can ask me later, no problem. Yes. Okay. And, um, just give me a second. I was still searching for one slide. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen again. I'll just show you one example of trigger right now. Uh, let me share it. Okay, so hope you can see it. Okay. I uh, hope my screen is visible, Hidesh Saurav. Yes, yes, it is visible. So this is a one example. Good examples, of, yes. Yeah. So this is a one example of trigger where I want to populate a contact description when a user creates a contact. Okay. So whenever the user is creating a contact, I want to make a contact description as well. So suppose you want to write a trigger in this scenario. Okay. So trigger how you can write it, trigger, contact, before, insert. So there will be an event called before, insert, you need to put in because as soon as contacts get created by user, the contact description should get entered automatically. Okay. So the event, there, uh, the event which you need to use is a before, insert. Then you need to start with that trigger dot new and hold a version of contact. Let, then you need to put up for, if, else, whatever satisfies. So here is for contact trigger new, give some name here. Then the contact description, that contact description is equals to contact created successfully by using a contact before insert trigger. So I just give some, this description, 
and then you can close this one. Okay, by with the help of a closing icon, is that okay? So this actually a format of writing a trigger. If you are, if you want to have a trigger in your system, similarly, let's take an example to populate contact description with modified username when user updates contact. Okay, suppose a user is updating a contact with modified username. You want to populate a contact description. Then you can see it will go into the different event that is a before update. First one was with the before insert. Now this one, this use case will fall into the event call before update. Okay, so it will start with again trigger. So trigger contact before update. Start trigger dot new. Give some name here for contact trigger new. Contact description will be contact whatever the description you want to give. You can give it here and close it. The main focus here is the event what you are giving. You want your contact whenever user creates a contact, the contact description should come. So it should go with the before insert. Post user create a contact, then you want to update it. Then it will go after a, after insert also. There is one more one more function called a after insert. So you can have a after insert as well according to the users. Okay. Similarly, there is an update required. But update is required before, unless an uh, use as soon as the user is updating the contact, you want to modify the username, okay, or the and the populate the contact description. So after when user is updating the uh, you know contact, then you need this trigger should trigger. So you need to give up before if you want that once user updates the contact, then you want to you know make this. Uh, make to then you want to modify the username then you need to give a after update so there is a number of events available in uh, you know in salesforce cpq to execute a different uh, criteria after before update insert delete undelete which actually depend on your use case but now, yeah, for now, I give you the two example here, which you can, you know, relate it whenever you are going to write a trigger. Now, writing a trigger requires a, you know, developer uh, experience. Configuration knowledge will not help you out there. But yeah, I can tell you the API classes or the how to, you know, the format of trigger, but you, you need to have a knowledge on developer part. Okay, so I'll share this sheet as well. This is a basic format to write a contact. There will be a lots of other events also. I'll take that also. I'll pop your in. I'll share that also with you all. So you can just review it. If any kind of a questions related to the trigger, you can feel free to ask me. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So this close here the topic uh, API class. Okay, the API class is done here. Thanks for watching the video. For full course, please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today.